and welcome back for another episode of Broken Sylvia. My name is Damien. We'll get to the S14 in a second, but before then, I'll try to keep it under one minute. I'll give you a quick update on what is happening with the R34 Skyline. So I think people are slowly thinking that I'm given up on the project, which is far from the truth. It is actually the total opposite. We have never been closer to being finishing it. I've actually driven the car about 100 or 200 meters just around the yard. I've done a few little laps. Um, there is still a ticky noise in the cylinder head. I've measured all the shims and found where the problem is. So we just need to order some new shims to fix the ticking noise. It's almost ready to get tuned and it is fully prepped for paint. So the last few weeks we've been waiting on a spray booth, which is now available. I think it's this weekend or next weekend. We are going down south with a car and all its parts to respray this car. After that, it's pretty much time to reassemble it and we're almost ready to hit the road. Sounds easier than it is, but yeah, the skyline is almost there. So the S14 Sylvia. In the previous episode, I showed you guys, uh, actually I explained to you guys why we went back to the SR20 from the RB25 Neo. And in this episode, we're gonna show you guys the work involved and a bit of the thought process as well. Now, I would slap the camera, but my mum says it is annoying, so I'm not going to I'm not going to do that this time. So the first job on the list to getting this car back on the road was to actually bring in a black S14 Silvia, which was going to donate its engine, gearbox, drive shaft, ECU and wiring harness. So we pretty much used everything except the wiring harness because both cars were original Aussie delivered kooky cars and the wiring harness was the exact same between the two, so I ended up just reusing my old one. So we were told that the car was fitted with a brand new clutch and the moment we had the engine and the gearbox out together, we pulled the gearbox off the engine and there it was, a brand new clutch. And by now I think there's almost like a trend going that every donor car we get seems to have a brand new clutch fitted to it. But yeah, it was another expense that we didn't have to go through. <laughs> Oh my god, it is a brand new clutch. Yes. And we have a sticker. Okay, sweet. It's brand new. So we didn't really know the history behind this donor car. We pretty much took it for a spin around the block, put it through the gears. We saw that everything works and we're like, yep, we'll take the drivetrain out of it. The smart thing would have been to, you know, compression test it and go right through it. So the least we could do is pull the rocker cover off, see if there's anything going on that's unusual, like sludge build up, but everything seemed to be nice and clean, which is, um, which is a very good start. So at this stage, we had all the parts we needed for the swap. So it was time to bring the red car out of the garage, onto the trailer and into the workshop. Once the car was in the workshop, we pushed the black car onto the trailer, delivered it back to its owner, and then some more time went by. My friend Preston and I then pulled everything out of the red car and 
it was good because everything was pretty much sold at this stage so it was just a matter of getting it out of the car so people can come around and pick their parts up. Mm -hmm. And a good thing is that I did keep my factory S14 front cross member or steering rack, however you may call it, because this is what we need to put back into the car so we can put the SR20 on top using the factory engine brackets and engine mounts and everything works like it should for a factory. Now in the next few minutes, I'm gonna spend explaining how I RB swapped my S chassis and how I would do it differently. If you don't care about it, um, RBs in S chassis, skip to minute whatever it says on the screen, but let's get into it. The first thing I had to do was pull the SR20 out of the car and pull the factory S14 cross member and steering rack out as well. Very simple process while the engine is out. Then I went on Gumtree, Facebook, whatever, you find yourself an R33 GDST cross member and steering rack. This is the first change I would make. There is no need to go out and buy a R33 GDST steering rack like I did because your S14 one is reusable on top of the Skyline cross member. So you can use a Skyline cross member with an S chassis steering rack. That's fine, that'll work. So then I got some R33 GDST engine brackets. I put them onto my RB25 engine and I also used R33 GDST um, engine mounts and the engine bolts straight into the S chassis, no problem. You could have the SR20 out, you could have the factory cross member out, you could have the R33 cross member in, you could have the RB25 in within a week and tops. You could, you could do that. If your engine was prepped, all your manifolds are on, ready to go, you could do this within a weekend. So get pumped if you wanna do an RB swap. Now, this is where things kind of take a turn for the S15 and S13 guys. Now, I'm not 100% sure on this, but this is just what I've heard. You're gonna run into clearance issues if you do it the way I did it. And the way I would do it differently, the more people I speak to, this is the way they did it. They used R32 GDST cross members, engine brackets and engine mounts. And this allows the engine to sit lower. So you don't have clearance issues between the bonnet and the top of the valve cover. So S14 guys have done it this way, S15 guys, S13 guys I've spoken to, nobody has had clearance issues. It's a bolt-in affair with factory Nissan parts. This is um, a good way for us, people from Australia, New Zealand, Japan, because these parts are you know easily accessible, seriously. Um, but for the guys in the US, these parts, you know, you guys have a real skyline tax. It might be a little bit expensive. So um, aftermarket engine brackets might be the way to go. That's the way I did it. That's the way I would do it. Let's continue the video. More time goes by and the subframe for the S14 is finally back from the powder coaters along with the entire underside for the Skyline. And you can probably tell how old this footage was. This was months ago. And I guess people did think that we gave up on this project as well, but we were working on it behind the scenes and we're finally catching up with all the footage. So with the subframe back, we installed some new Super Pro steering rack bushes, put it all back in the car, made it a rolling shell, and it was finally time for the car to receive a well-deserved wash. Civil rights, you demand that I eternize your name. Walk ahead. You cover us in shame, and I take the blame. Living by the rules, team, which high school blues. Walk ahead. Stop in a bed. 
and shining. Joker's got silver lining. Holy Mary sings songs in the wet rain. Walking ahead. Provoke 